Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to the Christ Honoring Commentary Series on the Book of Genesis by Brother James W. Knox, my pastor at Bible Baptist Church in Deland, Florida. And this is uh, the copy of the, or the cover, I should say, of the book. And this book is not in print at the present time, but they are working on a newer edition where it's going to be a more of a um, chapter by chapter, verse by verse commentary, and not a devotional um, commentary anymore. And hopefully that. Those uh, day-by-day devotionals will be put in there somehow, somewhere, and uh, the rest of the uh, book when it gets reprinted. So, and this is the older edition, and it was a day-by-day devotional type book, and good topics in here so far. And this is again written by James W. Knox, and the church website is www.jameswknox.org, where you can go straight to the store part of the website and that's store.jameswknox.org to find all of Brother James's books except for the ones that are not in print at the present time. So we're going to go ahead and get into this topic here for March 7th here in a few minutes. And we're going to read Genesis chapter 10 and this is uh, the title of this for today. It's titled The Family of Ham which takes um, which is in Genesis 10 verses 6 through 20. But we'll go ahead and read all of Genesis chapter 10 first and then get into the topic. So I'll put that aside and grab the Bible. And before we get started on all that, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And he too can be your Lord and Savior if he's not already. And he is not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance and put their faith and trust in uh, him and him alone. And he will wash away all your sin. So, as Jesus said in chapter 14 of John, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. So, it's through Jesus alone. <clears throat> All right. Second, get the situated better there. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, get into chapter 10 here and read this chapter. And there's 32 verses here, so let's go ahead and read this, and then we'll get into the topic, um, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, um, all right, so here we go, chapter 10, and verse 1 says, now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and unto them were sons born after the flood, the sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, and uh, Madai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshesh, and uh, T- uh, Tyrus, and the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, and Rephath, uh, and to- Togomar, or Togoma, and the sons of Javan, uh, or Javan uh, Eli, Sh- uh, yeah, Elish, Elisha, and Tarshish, Kittim, and Dodanim. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families, and their nations. And the sons of Ham, and this is going to be the uh, topic for today, um, here, uh, verses 6, I think it was through 6 through uh, 20 here, on the family of Ham. So let's go ahead and continue reading on. It says, And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Foot, and Canaan, and the sons of Cush, Seba, and Havilah, and Sabta, and Rema, and Sabtacha. Sorry if I'm having a hard time pronouncing these names. They're a little challenging to um, pronounce. And uh, the sons of Rema, Rema, and uh, Sheba, and Dedan, and Cush begat Nimrod, he began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore, it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord, and the beginning of his kingdom was uh, Babel, and uh, Urich, and Akkad, and Kel, uh, Nia, uh, the in the land of Shinar, <coughs> out of that land went forth uh, Ash shore and builded the and builded Nineveh and the city uh, excuse me in the city of Rehoboth 
and Kala and resin between uh, Nineveh and Kala. The same is a great city. And Mizraim begat Ludum and Anamim and Lehabim and Naphtuhim and Path Rusim and Caslahim, out of whom came Philistium and Caphtuhim and Canaan begat Sidon his firstborn and Heth. <coughs> And the Jebusite, and the Amorite, and the Girgashite, and the Hivite, and the Archite, and the Sinite, and the Arvadite, and the Zimmerite, and the uh, Hamathite, and afterward were the families of the Canaanites uh, spread abroad. And the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon, as thou comest to Gerar unto Gaza, as thou goest unto Sodom, and Gomorrah, and Adma, and Zeboim, even unto Lashah. These are the sons of Ham, after their families, after their tongues, in their countries, and in their nations. And in verse 21, it goes on to uh, Shem. So unto Shem, also the father of all the ch children of Eber, the brother of Japheth, the elder, even to him, were children born, the children of Shem, Elam, and Ashur, and Arphaxad, and Lud, and Aram, and the children of Aram, Uz, and Hul, and Gether, and Mash, and Arphaxad begat uh, Selah, and Selah begat Eber, and unto Eber were born two sons, the name of the one was Peleg. For in his days was the earth divided, and his brother's name was Joktan, and Joktan begat El Almodad, and Shelaf, and Hazar uh, Ma Mavrith, and G uh, Jira, uh, J or Jera, and Hadoram, and Uzzel, and Dikla, and Obal, and Abim uh, Al, and Sheba. And Ophir, and Hav Havalah, and Jobab, all of these were the sons of Jokan, or Joktan, excuse me, Joktan, and their dwelling was from uh, Misha, as thou goest unto the, uh, unto Sephir, the mount of the east. These are the sons of Shem, after their families, after their tongues, and their lands, after their nations. These are the families. The sons, or these are the families of the sons of Noah, after their generations and their nations, and by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. Wow, so there you have it. Those are all the names there. And I apologize if I pronounced any of them uh, wrong, but uh, there you have it. That's all of chapter 10. And now let's go ahead and <clears throat> get into the topic for today for the 7th of March, and this is titled, The Family of Ham, and this is from Genesis, Genesis 10, verses 6 through 20, so let me read you what Brother James wrote here, and this is on page 96 and 97 of the copy of the book I have, and he writes here, says here, the first point that stands out with prominence in regard to the family of Ham is the reference to Nimrod in verses 8 and 9. <clears throat> of the seven uses of the word mighty in Genesis, three have reference to Nimrod. We have not seen the word used since the sons of God bore the designation prior to the flood. It would seem as though Nimrod represented a revival of the antediluvian spirit of independence and rebellion with its disregard of God and his authority. While the literature on Nimrod is fascinating, Hislop is the most extensive and well-documented. One must trust uh, secular sources for the information, and um, none of it will be restated here. So we shall content 
ourselves with what God chose to say about the man, right? So uh, Nimrod is specially associated with the founding of Babel, the ancient name of Babylon. This first mention of the place, which is so familiar elsewhere, should be specially noted. Babylon henceforward, uh, henceforward stands for everything that is godless and for the great opponent of the people of God. It was a Babylonian garment, Joshua 7.21, that led to the first sin in the promised land. Uh, and it was Babylon in one form or another that caused most of the trouble to the nation of Israel. In the Old Testament, Babylon is a godless city and empire. In the New Testament, it is a godless system, and it would form a study of the greatest possible significance and value to look at all the passages where Babylon is mentioned until at length we come to its destruction as recorded in Revelation 18. Nimrod is also connected with the land of Shinar, which will be the locale of the image of the beast during the time of great tribulation. It says, see the author's work, a Christ-honoring commentary on Zechariah for details. And I encourage you to get a copy of that book and read it. Good book there. Uh, however, not all is as clear cut as some writers would make it appear. The text says twice that Nimrod was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Before the Lord is used 269 times in uh, the Word of God, and it never carries the idea of being in the presence of or under the watchful eye of God. Uh, he may have been a mighty hunter of men, like those in Micah 7-2, but we just do not know. It is best to just leave this small bit of information and move along, right? Speculation usually leads nowhere or worse. Amen? The notion that Ham's children populated Africa is derived from the phrase in Psalms 105 and 106, where Egypt is referred to as the land of Ham. However, to limit the scope of Hamitic uh, migration to that continent would be a mistake. Shinar is the region of modern Iraq, 1010 of um, Genesis, and Nineveh is central to the Middle East, which is Ch um, Genesis 10, verse 11, the reference there. Uh, later, Assyria is referred to as the land of Nimrod, Micah 5, 6. Buddha, a false god of the Far East, was of Hamitic uh, stock. Hmm. Interesting. The other point in this section is the uh, prominence given to Canaan and his descendants, verses 15 through 19 of Genesis chapter 10. This is doubtless because of the connection of Canaan with Israel in the light of subsequent history. Uh, uh, Sassy, that's S A Y C E, uh, says, the age to which the chapter takes us back to, uh, let me reread that. So again, Sessi uh, says the age to which the chapter takes us back is indicated by the position given in Canaan. It is a position that was true of it only during the age of the 18th and 19th Egyptian uh, dynasties. Hmm. All right, and then one final note here on... Um, Going back to Genesis chapter 9, verse 25, it says here at the bottom of the page, in a Senate, uh, Senate speech delivered in 1805, Thomas Jefferson said, through the portal of slavery alone has the grace, graceless son of Noah ever entered the temple of civilization. This from the man who wrote, we have these truths to, or excuse me, we hold these truths to be out so be self-evident that all men are created equal. It's such a strange world. Brother James ends on that note. All right, so that is the end of uh, the topic for today on the family of Ham from Genesis 10, 6-20. And I uh, apologize if I read any of that wrong, trying to 
go through here and read this as clearly as I can from Brother James's writings. And so, amen. All right, so good stuff there. And uh, so what we know from of Nimrod from the Bible is what we know, and everything else is just secular. And as uh, a matter of fact, uh, Brother Jed and I went to uh, um, over to Europe and went to this museum over there and saw a bunch of stuff uh, about um, the city of Nimrod, and it was pretty interesting but weird at the same time so um that's uh i can't remember the name of that museum but it was over there in london and uh they had a bunch of stuff there and part of the museum on the city of nimrod and uh showing what he supposedly looked like and all that so and very interesting secular stuff but don't really know for sure what's real and what wasn't wasn't i mean other than pictures that somebody might have taken or um, things they found over there in Egypt, so, all right, so that's the end of that, and, uh, tomorrow will be the 8th, and we'll be talking about, uh, this topic here, considerations on Genesis 10, so that'll be tomorrow's topic, uh, and this is page 98 of the book, so hope you'll come back tomorrow for that, and, uh, if you missed any of these, uh, broadcast you can go back and listen to them in their entirety and again this book is not in print at the present time but i'm sure you can find it excuse me uh somewhere on the internet and uh all of brother james's books are still in print including the one i just mentioned other than this one the book on zechariah which is a good um uh, commentary there and so you can get that and all of his books on www dot jameswnox.org or go straight to the store part of the website which is store.jameswnox.org and look up all his books there and other materials and then also the youtube channel that he has where all his or most of his sermons are up on there and that's uh james knox uh sermon youtube channel so check that out and he's going through the book of uh or the pastoral epistles and he's going through the book of first uh timothy right now and uh, going through all those books there, and pretty good stuff so far that he's covered on, on that uh, series of messages, so amen. All right, well, that's uh, it. also wanted to mention um, the other broadcast I do, which is the Baptist Bread and Scripture Song broadcast, and um, that can be uh, watched either on Facebook or YouTube, along with uh, this one here, and uh, the, the Book of Genesis uh, commentary series of messages I've been doing and going through the year on this one. So that's uh, uh, the YouTube channel is Ambassador for Christ Broadcasting or typing in Baptist Bread Broadcast and look me up that way and like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when I'm posting those up. So amen. All right. Well, that'll be about it for today. So thanks for watching and may the Lord richly bless you until next time. Bye-bye for now.